Hi there. Um, I wanted to bring you a special sort of video on um, sieges in AGED's American Civil War. Um, kind of like just a brief tutorial on on kind of how sieges work here in, in AGED's American Civil War and what can happen. Um, kind of give you a little background. I was in a really an epic game with Pierre where um, I'm the Union and, and, and Pierre is the Confederates and um, it was a pretty fast paced game and we were doing really, you know, generally several turns a day. Um, kind of give you just a little bit of background. I had at one point pushed them all the way to the gates of Richmond and I had taken over all of Texas um, and I ended up losing it all the entire army in Virginia and more or less starved away. Um, but I had a little guy named General Grant who just went on an absolute rampage out west. I finally was able to orchestrate him with five divisions plus um, command cost free support and artillery battery support and then full, full uh, engineer union, medical company, balloon um, supply wagon support and he just went crazy down here. He took New Orleans, and then he took Mobile, um, and then we took Vicksburg, and then he came up here and took Memphis, and then Nashville. I mean, it, these are just, these are the objective cities. You can see I still hold these um, at the turn. Now, what had happened one though? What happened was foreign intervention came in, and uh, yeah, I, 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 that's that's never happened to me before. I came in for obviously the Confederacy, and um, we were pushed out of Mexico City, and we ended up here, the Mexicans ended up here in North Mexico, and just absolutely crushed the French um, in battle after battle. So at one point, my national morale was, was as low as 60, and then when Grant just went crazy out west, it had risen all the way back to 102. Now, my strategy was, okay, Grant's going to take care of things in the west. He actually had defeated the British Army up here. Um, up here in Michigan, just really, he basically captured two divisions up there and, and destroyed the, the West. And then uh, we had taken back Louisville, we had lost Cincinnati, had taken it back. I mean, Grant was just, he was getting ready to move in here and, and push him out of Cairo. Um, we had lost uh, St. Louis, but like I said, out east, we, we had lost the entire Union Army um, at one point, basically. And um, to save DC, I had built a fort. Now, just so you know, I had also built forts in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, in New Orleans, and in Memphis. And there's a lot of debate on you know when you want to build forts. But what I what I thought was, and it was actually working quite well, is that the Confederacy can't use jacks in a counterattack if my boys are in a fort. Um, generally, I like to you know have a division division plus there. Um, you can see here, Lyon. He's you know eleven. General Lyon is eleven thousand men. Um, in the fort and uh, his division, but he has kind of support around. Now, this is a level two fort in DC, which means it's the newer fort that's built, um, the higher quality one. General McDowell has about 20,000 men, 138 cannon. Of course, some of that is, uh, is coastal artillery, or is it not? It is, yeah. There's you know, so it's really about 100 and 110 cannon, um, with you know, so it's best about two divisions with artillery and medical signal balloon supply wagon support. Now they were getting supply, so that I sort of thought that okay, they're not getting supply, but um, here's what happened. Um, national morale is at 102 for. Prince George of Maryland is besieged and totally breached. Now, I wasn't really worried about that because they had level 8 entrenchments, they had 100% supply, 100% ammo, um, and they were in decent shape. They had, you know, taken some hits, as you can see. So they're slowly taking hits as they're being besieged. Um, and let's see, seven breaches. That was, I never had a game where a fort had gotten seven breaches. And I didn't think that Lee would assault, and I also didn't think that they would surrender because, well, they had supply and they had wagons. So this is late June 102. I'm confident. Um, I'm in a good situation. 
Chattanooga is held here with really three divisions. Grant is getting ready to just sweep the field out here out west. Um, and even I'm in an okay situation now that I've lost this because I've because I'm able to stabilize at Baltimore and there's a river here that really makes an attack on Baltimore difficult. I mean, Ruder tried um, a couple of terms ago and lost about 14,000 men and five national morale. Um, I have a division in New York and I also have a half division in Boston. Like I said, um, the British Army was just destroyed um, up here. There wasn't anything left of it really, just a few militia units. And I'm confident in Mexico that we're able to um, go to Mexico. Go! There we go. We're able to, to stay here against the French army and hold um, hold it. We were outnumbered about two to one, but there's a little eight entrenchments. Um, didn't matter. And then I got the next term from, uh, from Pierre, and uh, this is what comes up. Oh, defeat. Um, yeah, there you have it. Defeated. Doesn't take long to see what happened. We surrendered to Confederation. Okay, so in French, because um, Pierre is, well, I assume he's French, and his, his language is French. We lost 21 units. The enemy gained, gained 179 victory points. We lost two national morale units. Of course, even more significant than just that is we have lost Washington, D.C., and Maryland. This is an infamous day for our nation, and popular support for war is dwindling rap rapidly. Um, D.C. was still the capital. I didn't really want to... Of course, I could have changed the capital to New York, and in hindsight, perhaps, you know, I should have. But I was like, oh, well, they're going to be they're going to be safe there. Um, so, all right, what do I say all that? Okay, look at the national morale. Went from 102 to 54, and that even included... We were just crushing them everywhere else. We... We beat them out here um, on the seas next to St. Louis. Um, we had again defeated them. Look at this. Look at those casualty ratios uh, down in up, down in North Mexico. Um, they've lost Cairo. Grant came in and really just he pushed them out. Um, we even were had really good kind of map control down here in 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 Tennessee. You know, so we. Even the winning that all else, but all else we still just lost a huge amount of national morale. Um, and there you have it. Um, so what does this mean? I mean, I think you know you're talking about the the game is you you know if you're besieged, you may even with supply, it's possible when it gets to enough breaches that they will surrender. I had never seen that happen before. Of course, I've seen it with no supply. If you have no supply wagon, and this is a big you know kind of tutorial issue. If you're interested in, in using forts, if you don't have a supply wagon, even if they have some supply, a, it seems that there's a very high probability that they will surrender. I had three supply wagons, and my boys there were in you know, pretty decent shape, but with seven breaches, um, they gave up. They gave it up. They gave up DC, and Lee, uh, yeah, Lee said, "Okay, well, that's uh, he's, he's taking it." Um, Really, it's a really interesting turn. I did not expect that. I thought I was in the in the you know situation of probably doing one of the just an amazing comeback from being down 60 national morale all the way back to 100 plus. And I really, he was sending Jackson up here. Jackson was his main kind of counter strike force. But um, I didn't you know holding the fort at Memphis and having um, a decent sized fleet. I was pretty certain that we could push Grant was going to be able to push him out of Illinois um, and then hopefully take a, and then move on to St. Louis. Um, of course, we didn't uh, even get that far because the entire garrison, two divisions plus significant support in D.C., surrendered. I speculate this is because of seven breaches. So that's really something to consider. Um, and by the way, your, your question probably is, okay, how long were they besieged? Long time. <laughs> I think about eight or nine months. And... Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's the thing. You know, you're talking about a really long, you know, being besieged for a really long time. Even with supply, McDowell, it seems he lost his nerve and um, he surrendered. So I hope that this is kind of like a sort of bit of a side tutorial on sieges in American in, in AGD's American Civil War. Um, I still believe that forts can be used with effect. Um, and probably, even, I almost wonder, you know, fighting the Union more than the Confederacy, because the Union 
can have the you know the option to really has more troops to be able to, to station there to leave a division plus or two divisions and a fort and move on and then you don't have to worry about the counterattack or the confederacy always has that that uh man shortage supply um yeah so if you, yeah so there you go this um they gave it up uh yeah make a comment if you've, you you guys can make a comment if you've experienced something similar to this where you've had really divisions surrender with supply wagons um, and full supply while they're in you know decent shape. Really, well, really better than decent. They were in pretty good shape. All right, guys. Uh, see you later.